Hi there, my name is Julie Aitken and I'm one of the Grants Advisors on the Shift the Power Scotland Comic Relief Programme. Hi, and I'm Jane Rose Grant. I'm the other Grants Advisor on the Shift the Power Scotland Programme. Welcome to our information session today. We will cover an introduction to the Cora Foundation and Comic Relief. We'll talk through some of the eligibility criteria, what we can and can't fund and also how much you can apply for, some tips in completing your application form, the timeline for the entire process, and what happens if you receive a grant. So the Cora Foundation contributes to improving the lives of individuals and communities experiencing disadvantage across Scotland and in developing countries. Since 1985, the Foundation has distributed over 152 million and made over 15,000 grants to charities. Our mission is to make a difference to people and communities in Scotland by encouraging positive change, opportunities, fairness and growth of aspirations which improve the quality of life. Our Shift the Power Scotland Comic Relief programme. So we are in partnership with Comic Relief as an intermediary funding partner. We're one of four organisations across the UK in this role. There's one in Wales, there's one in Northern Ireland and there's also one in England. The vision for this programme is to shift the power from large organisations to local people and to use that local knowledge to inform where funding goes. So we're taking quite a flexible approach in how, how this programme was de designed. With that in mind, people with lived experience are really important to this programme and you will see that throughout the, the application process. We want the, the funding to be flexible and responsive to your needs as an organisation so you can apply for funding over 12 to 18 months, whatever suits you. We're also looking to fund work that is new or risky and something that other funders, funders may not fund. And the final decisions on all of the, the funding applications will be made by a panel which comprises some people with lived experience of the four themes. So now we're going to talk about who is eligible to apply to this program. Groups are eligible to apply if you had an income in the last year of less than £250,000. You need to be either a charity registered with Oscar or a constituted community or voluntary group. You can apply if you're the branch of a bigger organization, but you have to have your own governance structure, your own set of accounts and a separate bank account. We cannot fund individuals, organizations that are based outside of Scotland or whose work is taking place outside of Scotland and we cannot fund one organization who's applying on behalf of another organization. So what will we fund? The work of this program is split into four key themes, which are the same four themes that Comic Relief uses for all of their programming. These are Children Survive and Thrive, Gender Justice, A Safe Place to Be, and Mental Health Matters and we'll talk in a bit more detail about what each of those means in the coming slides. One thing that has to be the case for all of the work is that it needs to meaningfully involve people with lived experience, either in the design or the delivery of the activity or in both. And that's a really important criteria for the program. So we hope that you think hard about how to make that happen within your work. We also want to see work that allows you to try something new in your approach or increase your reach and capacity. It can include both project and a proportion of running costs. We won't be able to fund capital appeals, crisis intervention, so without some evidence of longer term support. So for instance, food parcels, which are a very important thing, but it's not part of what we're going to be funding. That would be considered crisis intervention. We will not be able to fund bursaries or scholarships or other work that's out with the criteria. And you can see that on our criteria and guidelines documents on the website. So the themes for the program. Um, children Survive and Thrive is the first one. This is about helping children during the first years of life. So from zero to five years old. Examples of what this might include are supporting parents, carers, and communities to be active champions and develop understanding of positive early childhood development. It could be testing new ways of supporting young children to achieve their potential before they go to primary school. 
Another example might be reducing harm by working with children and families who are at risk of neglect, abuse, or adverse childhood experience and inequality. Training and development for families, staff, and volunteers in an early year setting is all the sort of thing that we're expecting to see. You may also have lots of other ideas and that's fine. What, what I'm giving you here are just examples of the things that we've talked about. Gender justice is the second theme. This is about contributing to gender equality by reducing violence and discrimination, which is based on gender and sexuality, alongside increased opportunity, empowerment, and understanding for women, girls, and LGBTQI plus community. This might include supporting women and girls to be safe, healthy, educated, and in control of their lives, reducing gender-based violence, harmful practices, and persecution based on sexuality, peer-led research on good practice in women-led activism and movements for social change, training and development for staff and volunteers on gender and sexuality. Finally, another example is advocacy work that shifts public attitudes and improves understanding on the influence of gender stereotypes. The third theme is called a safe place to be, and this is about enabling people who have faced or are facing homelessness to resolve their situation and get support. It's also about supporting those who have been forced from their homes and enabling them to build a new life free from conflict, persecution, or trafficking. This could include those affected by domestic violence or refugees or asylum seekers. It could also include programming that, that addresses peer advice networks between people who have experienced homelessness, opportunities for people who to have their voices heard in how services work, supporting strong local community connections for people who have faced homelessness. It might be about work that challenges stigma and discrimination around homelessness. Finally, another activity would be to create safe and supportive communities for refugees and asylum seekers. The fourth theme is called Mental Health Matters. This one is about empowering people with mental health issues or challenges to share their stories, live free from stigma and discrimination, and build positive relationships and experiences, including increased opportunities and access to support. This might involve improving the mental health and support networks of people experiencing or at risk of poor mental health, especially those from marginalized groups. It could be about increasing the accessibility and relevance of mental health support services to the people who need them. It could be peer-led research on good practice in mental health recovery and support, or it might be work that shifts the attitudes that create stigma and discrimination around mental health. How much can you apply for? This grant program will provide grants between one and eight thousand pounds. We're looking for people to include realistic costs in their application and that means not spending far too much on small things but it also means don't undersell yourself. So if something is going to cost a thousand pounds don't think that you should bargain yourself down and ask for less than that. We want to see people asking for the money that they really need in order to make the work happen. The grants can cover up to an 18 month period, so you can spend it in quite a short amount of time or you can spread it out over the 18 months. That's entirely up to yourself. Grants can be for standalone projects or part of a bigger project. What you need to know is that if it is part of a larger project and you're successful in your application to us, we might do, give you a conditional grant depending on the match funding needs you have for your larger project. So if you don't already have the other money in place, what we, would, we might do is say, yes, you can have a grant for us, from us, but you need to show us that the other funding has come in also before we release the monies. The next thing we're going to talk about is how you can apply to this program. The application is online on the CORA Foundation website, and the only way to apply is by filling out that online application. Really good idea to take time to read the application form guidance notes and the hints and tips that are also on the website, because we've tried really hard to give as much detailed information as we can about how you go about filling out the application form. We are happy to take um, questions 
at the office either by emailing us on the shift the power email which you can also find on the website or if failing that you could ring the office but email actually gets you a quicker response more often so i'd advise trying that first the application form has a number of different pages and there are some key aspects of it that we think it might be useful to talk through one at a time. And I'm going to hand over to Julie now to do that. So yeah, as Jane said, these are a couple of different sections from the application form. We won't talk through all of it, but these are, these are things to think about. So you'll be asked which of these policies slash checks you have in place. Please just tick the ones that are relevant for your organisation. We often use the example that if you don't employ anyone, you don't need to have an employer's liability insurance. We're just looking to see here that you have all the right policies and checks in place for, for your organisation. A really important part of this programme is the safeguarding aspect of, of your work. So you will be asked if you have a safeguarding policy in place already. There are three answers to this question. Yes, no or not yet. So if you don't have a safeguarding policy in place at the moment, we'd encourage you to click the not yet button and start um, discussing and looking at that safeguarding policy. We will ask you if you click not yet to submit that policy by the 1st of November. So that's something to think about and do have a chat with us or watch our other safeguarding um, tutorial if you want further information on that. The last box will ask you to tell us what you actually do with your safeguarding within your organisation and this is your opportunity to tell us for example, if all new staff receive safeguarding training, if there's update training, if staff and volunteers are PVG checked, that staff know what to do in the event of a safeguarding issue arising. Basically, everything that you do to ensure that the children, young people and vulnerable adults that you work with are, are safeguarded and, and taken care of. Next section is just some of the financial information that we ask for. So you'll see that we ask for year one and year two figures. So year one is your most recent figures and year two is the previous year. Now that could be your financial year or a calendar year, just depending on whatever your, your organisation uh, works to. If you are a new organisation, and we've had a few questions already from new organisations, please complete just your projected figures for the 19 to 20 financial year. You'll be asked, what your bank details are and it's really important that these details that you give us in section five here match the bank statement that you then send later on that's something that we will check for so please do make sure that the figures all match up in section seven you'll be asked what the total amount of funding you're looking for and as jane said earlier we're looking for realistic costs that reflect the work that you're doing so please um don't uh, ask for too little if you if you need money to do your work. The next question has absolutely no bearing on the outcome of your application. This is purely for our reporting purposes. So we would like to know whether you'll use the money within 12 months or 18 months of receiving the funding. And that is really up to you and your organisation and, and what your work looks like. But as I say, it's got no, no bearing on the outcome of your application. We ask for a rough breakdown of the costs and you can add a further uh, five fields or, or further if you want to tell us um, additional costs but just the kind of main budget headings is, is what we're looking for there as jane mentioned earlier on if you are applying for part funding for a project this last box is where we need you to tell us what funding you already have in place for that work where you've applied for and also if you've got a track record of achieving match funding for projects that's really helpful for us to know in advance when we're looking at, at the feasibility of of the project. Section eight is about additional support. So as part of the Shift the Power Scotland Comic Relief Programme, there will be a whole range of capacity building and training opportunities. And this question is really to find out what you might want in terms of additional support or training. So we've put some suggestions in there and, and these are things that we think might be useful. So please tick any that are useful for you um, any that you would like to attend but also if there are other things that aren't there please do tell us we're really interested to to hear that and this again has no bearing on the outcome of your application this is purely so that we can plan 
a useful and, and relevant program of capacity building for, for the entire program. We ask for three things enclosed with your application, uh, a copy of your most recent financial accounts, the organisation's constitution or governing document, if you're not a charity registered with OSCAR, and a copy of a bank statement. So we have some key dates that are useful for you to know when you're planning your application and your project. Applications must reach us by 2pm on the 30th of September 2019. We'll be assessing the applications throughout October and November. The lived experience funding panel will be meeting hopefully end of November, early December, and we would hope to announce the funding decisions in December 2019. Your funding can start from January 2020 and your funding must be spent by May 2021. What happens if you receive a grant? The grants are payable 100% in advance, most probably in January. We ask for short six monthly reporting. This will be an online form and should be fairly quick to complete. As we've already mentioned, there will be a capacity building programme, which we're really hoping to co-design with um, organisations that receive a grant. There'll be ongoing support from Jane and myself. We might come out and visit some of the work that, that you're doing. And there might be possible involvement with the comic relief storytelling and media team. So that's to do with their, um, their TV campaigns, the sport relief and comic relief appeals that you may have seen online. They may want to come out and film some of the work that you're doing. If this felt appropriate and it won't be appropriate for all of the work that you're doing, if, particularly if you're working with vulnerable, vulnerable individuals. So that might be something that we, we chat to you about later on. And that is it. That is our Shift the Power Scotland Comic Relief Programme information session. Thank you for listening. If you do have any further questions, as Jane said, give us a call or contact us at the shift the power at cora.scot email address.